Welcome to a new episode of Tenanting Well. My name's Will Frazier and I'm here with Craftsman Real Estate Services. And what we do is we just always try to pack together as much excellence as possible based on the belief of a couple different key things. So let's let's dive into those real quick. Everyone is capable of doing all things with excellence. Excellence is a choice and we need to make it. And number three, we don't live in a world where we are God. We don't determine exactly what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what is false. We need a village. We need help with that. So what we're going to talk about very briefly today in Tenanting Well is keeping records. So as a tenant, the best practice here would be to keep your own records. And yes, you want to have a property manager or a landlord who is skilled and excellent and honest and all those things. And I will say like, you don't want to operate in a complete lack of belief that they are skilled, you know, um, transparent and honest. But it, there's this old saying, trust but keep the powder dry or trust but verify, keep the powder dry like gunpowder. It's like, I'm gonna trust that you're peaceful, but I am going to be prepared, um, you know, in, in the event that, that my assumptions are, are not correct. And so with record keeping, I see the importance of this pretty regularly, but I, I'm gonna use a, an illustration from today. A tenant comes to me after I do a routine set of emails, and I say routine, it's a new routine. So, sorry, this will be the first month that I've done this, but it's a practice that I should have been doing before, and I'm working on systematizing my property management business so that things are lighter and easier and better for everyone. So I send out a reminder, it's uh, you know it's in the first cycle of the month, and we are past the first few days, but we're before the category of like being really late, and so just a courtesy reminder that people have a past due balance and to hop on and make those payments as, uh, as soon as they can to avoid the compounding you know, situation of late fees. So just a courtesy reminder, not, you know, not long, not rude, not you know, overly flowery at all, just a courtesy reminder. Like my car company sends me about car payments and my mortgage lender sends me about mortgage payments. And then someone responds to me and was like, based in essence, what are you talking about? I'm not late. I paid a little bit yesterday, I'm paying the rest of it today, and it's not due till the 5th. Well, it's due on the first, it's late on the fifth. So, you know, slight clarification with that. And that all depends on your specific lease. So I, you know, I say that just as a as an ism, as an easy saying here, but that depends on your, your specific lease, when something's due and if there's a grace period. But, like, but, <laughs> um, it, if I sent you a balance, it's because it's, it's due. Like, no, no, I've made every payment. Well, it's a computerized system, so you know, like I don't know. I paid every month on time. Like, well, again, it's a computerized system, so you see the you see the the argument here is like, hey, I, I I don't like sit down and tabulate those things every month. It's an automatic system that knows when your rents due and assesses a late fee if it's not paid on time, and then rolls that forward. It credits the next payment first to what's owed and then to what's not owed. And so if you continue to make short payments, it's just gonna compound. If you don't pay a late payment, it's just gonna keep compounding. And so for somebody to come and say, I've paid every time on time, I'm not late, I don't owe it. I'm, well, well, you're not arguing with me. I mean, you are at this point, but you're arguing with computers. So, so my response was find an error and let me know. I'll take a look at it and we'll revise it if it's an error. To which they responded, like, you need to call them. I'm like, no, 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 I don't need to call them. It's a computer system. You need to find the error. So what they're having to do right now on their time, not mine. I mean, it is ultimately taking out my time because they're texting or calling me and that's a waste of my time. But what they need to do, and so what I wanna put in front of you as an illustration of being prepared would be they need to have the best practice here would be have an Excel spreadsheet that just lists your month. And I would recommend that you do this with your budget as a whole. Excel, an app like YNAB. Uh, there's a there's a you know an app for couples called Zeta that you know does pretty well. But some kind of tracking app that's allowing you to name dollars and track dollars that you spend. 
And that way you can go back and see, especially if it's an Excel spreadsheet for your rent and your utilities, on this date, I paid this. You know, this, you know, here's the month, here's my monthly rent, I paid it here, here's my utilities. You know, and that would even give you a general sense of, you know the age of your home, you know the size of your home, and if you get kind of a running 12-month average of what your utility costs were for that age and that size of a home, then you can budget more effectively when it comes time to move into a different place. And so it's like, well, if it's a similar similar age home, but it's 400 square feet bigger, you could probably scale that by a percentage and say, we can expect these kind of utility costs. Let's back up though. Keeping those records is instrumental to you having a happy situation in the event that something goes wrong. Because this person, as an example, they have no defensible position. Their case, when we go to court, which I will have to evict them, if they stand on the hill of, you're wrong, and it's a computer that is automatically calculating this, and they're not willing to do the work to look back through the records, their bank statements, and when they've, they've paid, and do that work, and they have no records, then they're going to have to go to court and prove that the computer is wrong. And I don't know if you've done much like work on you know computers or like you know, but like automated tracking things online are pretty stinking amazing. And that's one of the reasons that good property management companies like to take the human element out of it as much as possible when it comes to numbers. That's why if your property manager asks you to pay online and not through Cash App or Venmo or PayPal. It's because these systems are for everyone's benefit. When you pay on Cash App or, or Venmo, somebody has to manually go in, probably move it between accounts, keep a record of that, and then add it to add it at a charge or a credit to it to their online system. It's cumbersome, it's easy to lose pieces, but if you'll go on to your property manager or your landlord's preferred payment site, find a free or a light way to do that. If they're charging a fee for an ACH transfer, like when you pair it with your bank account, talk to your property manager, see if they'd be willing to eat that fee. Uh, but, but use those systems if they're available to you because they're for your benefit as well as your property managers or your landlords. But at the end of the day, keep records. Have a copy of your lease. If you don't, ha if you don't get a copy of your lease after you sign it, just reach out to your, your property manager, your landlord, and say, hey, would you send me a copy of that lease I'd like to have on file as well? They may respond and say, absolutely, you can, you can find it at this link because many property management companies have a, uh, a file sharing site that you can always ac access the uh, leases, the late fee, or the uh, eviction notices. Anything that, that ha happens that's specific to your uh, tenancy would be accessible on that site. If they don't, they'll just shoot you a copy of your lease. Just have that on record. It's good, good for you to review, to know your obligations, but also to understand when your landlord is not doing what they've committed to. Because a lease is a two-way covenant. It's a, well, I guess in that way, it's a two-way agreement. It's, I will uphold these rules, these regulations, and do, do it in this way, and you will agree to do this in this way. And so that is how we mutually thrive as tenant and landlord, but you can't, you, you can't simply re rely on the other party to do all that they should be doing without doing a little bit of your own due diligence. So keep a copy of your lease, keep a copy of everything that's, that's served to you, and uh, keep a record of your lease payments. I would recommend kind of upgrading that and keeping a record of your utility payments if you pay those, so you can get a general sense of what housing costs you, and you can make decisions based on that. Put yourself in a financially healthy situation. But I hope this has been helpful. Part of tenanting well is understanding, number one, how people operate, and number two, how we can thrive together. Not from an assumption that everybody sucks or not from an assumption that everybody's amazing and perfect, but just a reality of we're going to get the best out of life if we will commit to pursuing excellence, we will treat other people as, the, as if they're committed to pursuing excellence, and one of the things you can do to, to demonstrate that is to communicate excellently, kindly, and respectfully, and then keep your records well. All right, until next time, thanks for tuning in.